Hey, it's AP, and today we're making house-shaped wall shelves. Ooh, check it out. If you watch the channel, you know that my wife and I are big supporters of the Montessori style of learning and education. We're also fans of, or at least my wife is, uh, of the Montessori kind of design aesthetic, which is more wood tones, natural wood tones, lighter wood tones, lighter colors. And as she was looking to decorate our son's bedroom, she came across these really cool house-shaped wall shelves. And as I tend to do, I looked at them and said, well, I can make that. And so here we are. The design is relatively simple. It's uh, just a bunch of 45 degree angles um, with one set where they're reversed. Uh, I'm going to make uh, two sets of these. Am I? Yes. So each of my children will have two of these in their room. One will be an eight inch and the other one will be a 10 inch. So this is eight inches. So another two inches out. Yeah, maybe, maybe 12 inches, 12 inches, four inches. Is that four inches? Maybe we'll do 10 inches. So it'll be 10, 10, and then I have no idea how to calculate these, so we'll kind of eyeball it. And uh, yeah, the, um, the thickness of the wood is three quarters of an inch, um, which is your standard one by um, lumber that you get at the lumber yard. And uh, for this, I'm using pine. Uh, I'm going to use for the smaller one, I'm going to use one by, one by four, which is actually one by three and a half. Um, don't forget, lumber numbers are really confusing. And for the larger one, I'm gonna do a one by five, which is a one by four and a half, or three quarters of an inch in by four and a half. Uh, and this time I got the premium pine uh, because I learned my lesson from the Montessori style bookcase using the uh, economy pine, which just was not fun to work with when you're trying to get straight lines. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to cut these down uh, to the 10 inch width. And I'm actually gonna give them maybe a 10 and a half, a, yeah, 10 and a half inches to accommodate the 45 degree bevel that I'm putting in here. Um, these don't have to be 100% perfect. I feel like that's my motto for everything. They don't have to be 100% perfect. Yeah, okay, so let's, uh, let's mark these out and cut them on the, uh, cut them on the, uh, the saw. And then I'm going to actually do the 45 degree cuts on my table saw, which will be very interesting. So let's uh, mark these up and cut them out. So uh, my wood's now all cut down to about 10 and a half inches. And uh, so now I'm gonna cut the 45 degree angles. I could do that on the compound miter saw, um, but I don't want to. Uh, so I'm going to do it on the table saw. And how I'm going to do that is I have set my blade to 45 degrees and I'm going to use my miter gauge in the miter slot. And I'm just going to push Uh, push these through on the line. It's very simple. So I'm gonna cut 45 degree angles on one side of all of them. Then I'm gonna have to flip them around and kind of do an opposite 45 degree angle on the other side. Um, if you can see, see how I did it here. We have a 45 degree angle that's going this way. And then up here, it's going the opposite direction to accommodate this roof line. Now I could have done a maybe 20, two and a half degree angle here, but uh, I didn't, I wanted to keep this as simple as possible. So we're just gonna kind of go that route. So, all right, let me grab my, let 
my dust mask. And if you like these masks, there is a link to them in the description below, as well as a link to my review of them. So now that I have my pieces cut, I'm going to start gluing the uh, bottom of the house together first. And then when that's together, I'll be able to get the, the um, dimensions for my gable. I'm sure that there's some sort of mathematical equation out there that will help me solve that, but I didn't know the words to type into the Google to find out what that equation is. So I'm doing it the lazy person's way or the smart person's way, depending on how you look at it. Okay, so I have my pieces. Uh, that's going to be a roof. That is going to be a side, a side, and then that's the bottom. Okay. Uh, first thing I'm gonna take uh, just a piece of 120 grit sandpaper and deburr the edges here. Um, I will come back through once everything's together and use some wood filler to, to fill in any of the imperfections. I mean, this is pine, so it's a soft wood, so it is prone to, to busting up. So, although this, this is the premium stuff, and I will say it handled, or it stood up rather nicely. Um, I also am using fresh blades, relatively fresh blades, so that helped too. All right. Uh, for this, I just, I'm using some wood glue and a brad nailer. Uh, I actually picked this up at Harbor Freight for like, 30 bucks, which is really cheap. So I'm, I'm, I have high hopes for this or low hopes. Uh, maybe I'll do a review video of this. Okay, so let's... figure out the uh, the gable so I have I'm gonna put that nice and tight and yes I am completely eyeballing this and uh, I'm okay with that. One day I'll figure out how to use Fusion 360 and, uh, and uh, drop plans. But for now, look at that, okay. All right, so Cut a 45 degree angle on this side. The same over here. And what that is going to do for me is uh, perfect. Okay, cool. All right, so now that my pieces are cut, I can now glue these together. And they should, if I cut them correctly, have very little overlap so I can sand it down nice and flush, but that's what it'll eventually look like. So let's glue this up.
that the wood filler is dry, I'm going to run my sander over it. I'm going to start with actually an 80 grit to really knock down the imperfections. Then I'm going to go back over it with like a 120 grit to get a nice smoother finish. And then we will put some stain on it. I think sanded down, uh, filled as best, as best as I can get it. And so now I'm going to uh, just wipe them down uh, first with a cheesecloth, and then I'm going to go back. And that's just going to help get the uh, all the remaining sawdust off. And then I'm going to go and wipe it down with just some water and that will help the grain perk up a little bit. You can also use a pre-stain conditioner uh, which will help on pine get the grain to, to, to rise a little bit so it takes the stain better. Uh, if you do not have pre-stain conditioner you can use water. How cool is that? To stain these I am just going to use a natural stain uh, color. What this is going to do is it's going to enhance the color of the wood versus changing the color of it like you would with an ebony or a chestnut color um, because we're going for that Ikea look, that Montessori look, that Swedish look. So we're going with the natural wood tones. And I figured when I did the Montessori style bookcase, uh, which was a lot of fun, I stained that a golden pecan because the color on the can looked really nice and light. But when I put it on, it came out to be a darker color, which is fine. I mean, it is what it is, but uh, this time I just wanted to try the neutral or the, the natural wood stain. See how that comes out. Okay. I mean, and just so you know, when you do this for the first time, your 45 degree miters are not gonna be perfect. You're going to have some dimples where you did your nails. Um, and that's okay because you made it and you should be proud of the fact that you actually did something and made something versus going out and spending money on something that you could just make. So be proud of yourself. All right. So let's, uh, let's start staining these guys. Yes, you are. You are. You're going to help me out here. All right. So we're going to start painting the the backs of the house shelves. Uh, we're just going to use a white. White. Uh, we asked her what her favorite color was. And yesterday it was pink. Today it was purple. Then it was black. So we figured let's err on the side of caution and just do white, right? Oh, yeah, white. White. You like, you like this color, right? Yeah, you got it on your hand now. And to the top. Yeah, make sure you get the top. Here, I'll, I'll hold it down. There you go. Oh, that smells good. The stain's all dry now, and this looks really good. This, this is, I'm very happy with how this really kind of just made the color pop a little bit, but subtly, a subtle pop of color. Uh, this looks great. So now I'm going to put on a coat of polyurethane and I'm going to use a clear satin polyurethane. I like this brand. Uh, it's Verathane. 
uh, you get at the Home Depot. Uh, this stuff is great because A, it's water-based, so it's super easy to clean up, but also it's triple thick, which means you just need to put one coat on and you're good to go. Because normally you're supposed to put on three coats of polyurethane. Well, they've somehow mastered the science. So when you put one coat on, that equals three coats. This is not an endorsement for, or a paid endorsement for this product. This is just the stuff I like to use. So uh, I'm gonna stir this up. You shouldn't shake this, by the way. Uh, you should hand stir it, otherwise you're gonna get bubbles. And nobody likes bubbles in their polyurethane. So, uh, okay. All right, we're in the home stretch. The polyurethane is cured. And so now I'm going to use my brad nailer to attach the backs to these houses. And then we're going to put on the hanging hardware. And then we're just gonna put them on the walls and just gaze at them lovingly because I made them. <laughs> Okay, there it is. Two lovely homemade house shelves. I'm actually quite happy with how these turned out. So if I were going to do this again, uh, I would only change, i change a couple things. Uh, first things first, uh, I used three brad nails on each corner. I'd probably go down to two just to minimize the amount of um, wood filler I'll need to use in, in, in uh, finishing this. Next, I would wrap it out the back and then insert the, the hardboard or the quarter inch plywood into that so it's all flush. If you can see here, the edge is kind of sticking out there. Um, so I would do that to make it a nice flush back. I'd also paint the backs. Uh, I didn't because I didn't. Right? Cool. All right, that project's done. And actually, now that I think about it, I kind of want a third. So I might go back down in the shop and make two more so they each have three in their rooms instead of two in their rooms. Well, I hope you learned something new today. And uh, I wish I had made plans for this. Um, I might try to go into Fusion 360 and create something. So follow me on the socials and I will let you know if and when that actually happens so you can make your own. Although if you watch the video, it's not that difficult. It's a bunch of 45 degree angles in different directions and you should be fine. If you have yet to subscribe to the channel, I suggest you do. I'm doing all kinds of fun things. It's not just house shaped bookshelves. I'm also building a studio scale Millennium Falcon and I'm building all other kinds of furniture and props and models and stuff that you're just gonna love. So hit that subscribe button right over here somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Until next time, stop planning and start making. Thanks everybody.